Welcome to the Christopher Humanity Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast. This is episode number 24 of the Christopher Jimenez Show. Thank you so much for listening. Um, again, I'm, I'm not going to apologize this time. I, I haven't been around for a while, but I just figured that uh, me and my cohorts here have figured that uh, I just better plow ahead. Just keep going forward. Don't look behind. So let's uh, let's go ahead and do that and start talking about what I just finished. And I just finished a Nike Plus training plan. Uh, that's for my... Uh, for my running career here. I finished, uh, I started and completed the Intermediate 5K Plan. i um, just going to run over some statistics for you. Uh, during the 5K Plan, this is an eight-week plan, um, I ran 147.5 miles in 34 runs. Um, or actually, the, the plan is, is, is 34 runs long. I actually, um, actually did four extra because I, I ran a St. Patrick's Day uh, 10k, so I, I that kind of increased my miles uh, quite a bit. Um, in fact, uh, that turns out to be about 18 miles a week, or 3.8 miles per run. Um, of course, I got yelled at by the app because it thought I was overtraining, which you know I guess technically I was. I was doing more than than what the app had called for, but you know that was. That wasn't too much extra. I burned uh, seventeen over seventeen thousand calories um, during that plan. Uh, that turns out to be about twenty two hundred a week. So, you know, that was pretty good. I I feel pretty accomplished to that. Um, what I'm comparing this to is uh, is actually to Adidas My Coach. I I switched over from Adidas My Coach to Nike Plus um, just because I like the interface more. Um, I like the integration more. Um, but one thing I do miss, I did miss from Adidas My Coach was was the coaching. The coaching was excellent in My Coach. And uh, when I found that that you had to go through this whole like uh, going through tr- Facebook to try and get a training plan through through um, through Nike Plus and and it wasn't even integrated with the app, I was kind of disappointed. Um, so I was super happy that they introduced these training plans. I was like, yes, I'm going to try this out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to write a review. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to increase my mileage. And I actually did increase my mileage and I increased my, my calorie burn. Um, some of the things I liked, you know, were that were just that, that it kept me on task. Um, I actually managed to log over 50 miles uh, running during the month of March. Of course, part of that was because I had that 10K, which I was uh, getting ready for. And I actually um, <clears throat> ran that pretty strong. Um, but it also pushed me to try some new things, uh, to try some strides, fart like sprints, and all that. So it kind of pushed me in, in the right direction. Uh, some of the things I didn't like, though, or uh, included the the inflexibility of the plan. Uh, I feel like, you know, I should be able to perform these runs whenever I can. That a rest day should be able to be moved back or moved ahead, um, depending on my needs. Um, <clears throat> you know, if if it you know, if my coach, or I'm sorry, not my coach, if Nike Plus, you know, called for four uh, runs during the week, I should be able to run them whenever I like. Um, However, that's, you know, while I could pull up the plan, and I could run it whenever I wanted to, and it would, you know, give me credit for it, um, you know, by saying, oh, you've got so many miles left, you know, one mile left, half a mile left, whatever, it, um, You know, it didn't. It, it kind of didn't give me credit for it, which is kind of, you know, I know I did it myself, but you know, it's kind of nice to get that feedback. Um, another thing I didn't like was the lack of in-ear coaching. Um, one of the big pluses for uh, for Adidas, my coach, was that it had in-ear coaching, meaning it, it knew how fast you were going, more or less, you know, based on your GPS, and would tell you, hey, you're slowing down a little bit too much. You need to you need to speed up a little bit if you want to reach your goal. Um, here, uh, with, with Nike Plus, it kind of just told you, hey, you're going to do some sprint strides today, okay? And it wouldn't tell you, okay, now it's time to start your strides. You know, it would say, warm up with a mile and then do strides for, for half a mile and then cool down. You know, it wouldn't tell me when it was time. Um, you know, 
it would be nice if it could, you know, after a mile, say, okay, start your strides now. Yeah, that would be that would be my feedback um, t- to have some in-ear coaching. Um, my results, well, I, I ended up um, running a sub 30 minute 5K during uh, at the end of the of the week, uh, actually just yesterday. So that was that was really fun. I hadn't run a th- sub 30 minute 5K in, in actually uh, about a year, so it was it was fun to do that. Um, good to see some progress. Good to see um, see me get better. So hopefully I, I should start a, a new training plan fairly soon. I, I, I plan to take about a week, maybe a week and a half off, um, and then start back up again. I have, uh, at the end of the month, I'm, I'll be running in the Lake Mineola 12K. So I, I should probably get some longer runs in, uh, figure out how to, how to run that 12K distance. Um, <clears throat> switching gears a little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's on the blog right now. Right now on the blog, I have a, a review of a biography by, uh, written by Alistair McGrath. It's entitled C.S. Lewis, A Life. Basically, he talks about, uh, you know, he looks at C.S. Lewis and, and he takes kind of an academic approach, which is different from the other biographies of, of C.S. Lewis that are popular now, um, written by people who had personal relationships with, uh, with Lewis. Um, Alistair McGrath never knew Lewis, never met Lewis. He um, <clears throat> only knows him by his works. Uh, so he takes uh, quite an academic approach uh, to to framing Lewis, and he frames him by his works, the, those being his publications, the, his personal letters, his diary, and he, and he reconciles the scholar, the novelist, and the Christian apologist all together, how, how that one man can be, you know, uh, well, uh, real well ex- uh, uh, respected scholar, um, an amazing novelist whose works even hold up to today, as as is evidenced uh, by the you know, by the books that are being sold, as well as um, you know the Chronicles of Narnia movie series, and then the Christian apologist who even today is widely read at least as a foundation, um, you know both his mere Christianity as well as his um, you know. Um, the problem of pain um, and a grief observed, of course, uh, not being apologetic, but you know, showing forth his heart, uh, the heart of, of grief and how to deal with grief and how humans react to it. Speaking of reactions, I have a reaction which is coming up on the blog uh, later this week. And I reacted, I'm reacting to an interesting quote that I heard uh, a couple weeks ago. The quote is as follows. It goes, you had better not go to college unless you are absolutely sure that it is God's will. Think about that. You had better not go to college unless you are absolutely sure that it is God's will. What are the implications of, of, of that statement, of that, of that world view? I'll discuss that later on my blog. Well, thank you so much for listening. Uh, it has been a pleasure try and uh, create some content for you check out uh, Positive Infinity the, the creators of this lovely intro and outro music they're located on iTunes remember you can follow me on Twitter at CJNNZ8